So I've been genuinely quite excited to put this video together because on a video that I put out about two weeks ago uh, called the number one attractive trait that 99% of men don't have that women want in a guy. Um, I had spoken about the idea that the main thing that separates the guys who get results from those that don't get results are the ones who actually take the initiative, take the risk to go over and say hello and strike a conversation. And in the comments, uh, a guy had made a statement, uh, which I just thought was absolutely fantastic. Uh, so if I just sort of scroll down to it, uh, he'd said, um, it's easier said than done, of course. After a thousand rejections, your confidence is pretty much destroyed. And I love this because this actually gives me an opportunity to really explain, uh, I think, the misconception that so many people have about how rejection works and how desensitization works and why definitely after a thousand approaches, you wouldn't necessarily have your confidence destroyed. In fact, it would probably go completely far the other way. So I thought, what better way to at least put this video together by requesting some help from some of my clients and friends who are dating coaches based around the world and uh, get their opinion and point of view um, on this as well as I want to be able to share my case uh, with this as well. But I think their message is going to be just as important as mine. And I think it's going to be just interesting to go through uh, their views as well as uh, kind of mix it in with mine too. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So I want to share my perspective on whether or not getting 1000 rejections would destroy my confidence. So for me, it depends on whether these rejections are successive or sporadic. Successive rejections means that every time I go out, I'm getting rejected. So it's just one after the other. Rejection, rejection, rejection. If this happened to me 1,000 times and all I knew was getting rejected, then 100%, like no BS that would capitulate my confidence. However, the caveat to this is I wouldn't let it get that far. Yeah, if I was a complete beginner to cold approach and I got rejected a hundred times in a row, after a hundred rejections, I would look to myself and think, right, something is clearly wrong here. I need to get feedback from someone. So maybe that's recording the audio of my conversation so I've got a point of reference or even better, finding someone who's better than me and getting them to give me no BS feedback because ultimately, we don't know what we don't know. And if nothing changes, nothing changes. If it was a thousand sporadic rejections, so let's say one in every three conversations resulted in a rejection, then this is different, right? This is completely different because we have to understand that when it comes to cold approach, everyone gets rejected. Rejection is a rite of passage. And if we're not getting rejected, then we're not pushing ourselves hard enough. But the difference with sporadic rejections compared to successive rejections is with the sporadic rejections, you're getting good results in between the rejections. And this is the important thing. Dude, I will go out there and every single time I go out to meet girls, I'm going to get rejected, right? It's, it's an expectation. I understand the game. Rejection is a normal and healthy part of the game because not every girl is going to find me attractive. But the difference I would say between sporadic and successive is with successive, all you know is getting rejected. And for me, this is not good for your mental health. It's not good for your sense of self-worth as a human being. So if you've gone out and all you know is rejections, stop what you're doing, get feedback. Yeah, get feedback from someone who's better than you and can give you some no BS feedback, tell you what you need to know rather than what you want to hear. Because what I find to be the case is the reason guys get so many successive rejections is down to three things. It's the way they look, the way they think, and the way they speak. 
speak. You can go back to the oldest videos on my channel and see that I struggle with all three areas. But by getting feedback, by working with people who are better than me and getting points of references, so recording my conversations, watching myself back, I was able to improve and I was able to improve fast. So yeah, if all you know is successive rejections, get someone to help you. And then as far as sporadic rejection goes, as long as you are going out and you are getting phone numbers, you are getting dates from cold approach, then dude, you've got to expect rejections, right? Rejections really are a rite of passage. Throw me in hell, I'll find a way to enjoy it. So yeah, hopefully this has been useful. Big love from Malaysia. Subscribe to Daniel and um, yeah, enjoy the rest of the video. <laughs> Okay, so Christian makes uh, three really interesting um, points there. So the first one is, hang on, let me blow my nose. There we go, right. So <laughs> much better. Uh, so the first point there that he makes is that you would first of all have to at least embrace rejection, which was that kind of last point that he made. If you're going to be putting yourself out there, you have to expect that you're going to experience rejection. And truth be told, you experience rejection in every part of your life. And believe it or not, you are experiencing rejection every single day. But there'll be a lot of things that you're just not really even thinking about or considering or even seeing it as rejection. You're just seeing it as like, well, okay, well, that option wasn't available to me or I wasn't able to get that. Oh, well, all right, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll deal with it and move on. So you have to embrace rejection um, to at least overcome it. Um, Another thing that he did say was uh, really kind of like on the technical side of uh, of the, fa the fact that if you're um, uh, uh, doing all these approaches and you know and you're you're doing things completely wrong constantly, then you have to be aware that you need to be seeking someone for support who can point out what you are doing right and what you're doing wrong, or even being able to observe yourself if you were to film or record your conversations listen to it back and go wow okay I can't believe like I reacted like that that I did completely wrong here I need to do something very very different no wonder uh the girls or women weren't interested in me so there is certainly a really important thing to bear in mind which is that coaches will give you the best feedback that you need to tell you how to change your ways so you are getting results which then kind of leads into the third thing of like, if you're getting uh, rejections consistently, then yeah, you have to recognize that you need to stop what you're doing and you need to do something different. And that there really is a difference between getting rejections just consecutively, as opposed to if it was happening here and there. But even then, and I think Christian did actually say it was like, you know, guys aren't even going to get that far with rejections, especially if they're new to practicing cold approaching or social skill stuff. You're not going to even get as far as a thousand. Hell, you're probably not even going to get as far as a hundred or even 10. If a guy puts himself out there, he doesn't know what he's doing. He hasn't got the confidence or the skills to know what's going on and he experiences a couple of rejections in a row, that rubber band effect from going out of your comfort zone too far and having that, that experience stretched to the point that you're like absolutely petrified of the experience, you're going to just end up recoiling and you're going to come back being even more terrified of the idea of going and speaking to people. Um, but something that, I, that Christian didn't say is that if you were if you were to do a thousand approaches and get a thousand rejections in a row, just think about the resilience that you would like create from that. You would become so desensitized from doing something so many times over and over again consecutively that you generally get bored of being rejected or emotionally. I don't even think your body would be like, again, I got rejected again. Oh, God, all right, let's, all right, let's do it again. You know, you would just naturally develop a confidence, if not just the boldness and courage that you would get, but just from the sheer boredom of just being rejected, that it just wouldn't really bother you or phase you anymore. And and I think that is something that 
that's worth remembering that the guys who go out when they've got the right kind of support system from like a coach, when they're then constantly talking to women and they are here and there getting really good conversations and then here and there they're also getting those rejections, um, they are even less phased about it. And especially when you've got someone saying constantly, right, okay, you did that well, but that was wrong. And then they make the adjustment and then suddenly they're getting a good result from it or they're not getting a bad reaction. Um, that is what's going to help also to overcome uh, rejection. But you would find that after a thousand consecutive rejections, I genuinely believe you would just be bored of experiencing rejection and that if you carried on doing it, then it, it just wouldn't phase you. That's not to say that your approach is are then going to go well and they're going to be right, you could still be approaching people and talking to strangers in the wrong way possible, but you're not going to be phased by it. And I hate to use the example, but when I think about when I've been on the underground or when I've been maybe walking through London and I have been approached by a homeless person, you know, they have their own kind of sales pitch that they'll give to people in the hopes that they'll be able to get money. Now, you don't know what that money is going to be going towards. You'd like to think that it would go towards helping them out, but you don't know. But if you've got then uh, these guys or, or these homeless people who are coming up to you, they give you the sales pitch. You know you're going to be, uh, you're being sold to, uh, or being having something requested from you. Now, some people have cash on them. Some people don't. If they end up saying to them, I'm sorry, I haven't got any, I haven't got any cash or like, no, I'm sorry, I'm not interested or you ignore them or you walk away from them and stuff, they aren't going to feel, aren't they? yes, they'll probably be unhappy, but they've probably done it so many times that that rejection isn't going to phase them. But the problem that they probably also got is that they aren't approaching people and giving the right kind of sales pitch to ask for help. It's too... Uh, from my experience, you know, it's too like the moment they come up, they're not, they're, they're literally just kind of trying to woo me. I have people who come up to me and they like try and give me a compliment and then it goes straight into the sales pitch and you can tell just from how they're speaking, like they're just in autopilot. They don't even mean what they say, which then makes me very skeptical of like, okay, well, if I'm going to hand over money to a complete stranger, what proof have I got that this is going to go to good use and sadly because of that that skepticism that does make me very hesitant to hand over money I'd rather you know hand it over to people that I can see generally are in uh, in need of help and they aren't necessarily requesting money so um so yeah, there is a right way to to be approaching and there is a wrong way to be approaching um but even if either way if you were doing a thousand uh, approaches and got a thousand rejections, so you would still get to that point where you would just be desensitized from feeling anything when it comes to uh, being rejected. Sorry, I just had someone at the door there. So let's now just watch David's uh, point of view video and uh, and hear what, what David has to say. After a thousand rejections, is your confidence pretty much destroyed? Uh, no, not in my experience. I've been approaching 11 years, uh, mainly in the UK and Australia, just back here. And no, it hasn't been at all. Um, I'm not crying into my porridge every morning. Um, so no, not at all. Um, and that, that's because the rejections happen regularly, but not continuously all the time. So you are getting positive reinforcement when you're going out approaching and yes of course you will get rejected most of the rejections aren't that bad um, and within five to ten seconds you're just moving on most people most women are polite these days um, but of course you will get a bad blowout you will get a bad rejection and it will sting it will hurt so you might might take you longer to get over that um, but no i'm not crushed by a thousand rejections i've probably definitely had a thousand rejections in my time so no um, however, if you have those 1,000 rejections continuously, one after the other, then I can imagine it's going to be pretty crushing and soul destroying. And if that does happen, then you need to reach out to uh, a coach, an approach coach, uh, such as myself, um, or speak to cameraman Dan. Um, yeah, speak to myself if you're in Australia um, and get some help. Get a coach who knows what they're doing, uh, a coach that can post YouTube videos about how they approach so you know they're the real deal and get their help and advice. Uh, immediately 
um, because you're clearly doing something wrong and you don't want to continue doing that um, because otherwise, yeah, if you keep doing the same thing again and again, you're just going to get the same result. But uh, that's me, David Thorpe, signing off from Sydney, Australia. Okay, so even with David there, um, I mean, he's got very, very similar point of view to what Christian uh, had shared. Um, but I mean, the main thing that he said is that he probably has experienced a thousand rejections and you can see there he's not broken hearted. He's not like a, a, a pool of mess or anything. Um, he's very much still sane, incredibly confident. Uh, and in fact, he recently got married as well. So, you know, considering all of those a thousand rejections that he's probably experienced, look at what the outcome is and that he came out of it more confident and he found a woman that he fell in love with and got married to and he's not broken there there's nothing wrong with him or anything um he's very very normal and down to earth again simply because he's become desensitized to being rejected as well as that has helped to just develop his confidence and improve his um his comfort zone with just being out in public and talking to people and of course everything when you do something completely brand new of course it's going to feel devastating because you don't know what to do you don't know what to expect maybe either and so you are going to feel it more so than if you probably did 10 rejections 20 rejections, 50, and so on. So I'll just go over a few points uh, that I had um, with this as well. I did actually write them all down and uh, I'll even kind of maybe reiterate some of them. Um, but certainly these are the things that, that I felt um, are just worth noting when it comes to, um, I think, well, it, it, doing a fa having a thousand rejections, especially if it were potentially either in a row or just in general. Um, so I mentioned it already that you would just become incredibly resilient if you did that many approaches. Your body would just simply become bored of feeling anxious and nervous and frightened and all that because you've just done it so many times. And also your brain as well would understand just through the fight and flight response of if you did it if you did an approach and you got a rejection you would still be alive afterwards so you're not going to just like instantly be killed or disappeared or evaporate by doing an approach you're going to walk away going like oh okay well actually that wasn't so bad um or you're going to get so much reference experience that's going to tell you this is the worst case scenario that's going to happen here and most of the time in fact no, that's not fair to say. I'd probably always say 99.90% .90 of the time, um, the worst that you'll get is like someone who ignores you, just tells you no, or they swear at you to go away. That is pretty much it. You're, you know, and, and even then it's questionable what you'd probably go over to say to someone that might offend them so much uh, to get those kind of reactions. But I mean, if you're going over in a very calibrated, very sensible and respectful kind of way, you'd be surprised at just how little rejection you get or if you get a rejection. In fact, in, in some cases, it's, I wouldn't even like term it a rejection. You're not just being told like no or they're not interested. It's really not as heartbreaking um, and, and devastating as you might think. Um. Uh, also, if you are going to be, if you were to do a, get a thousand rejections in a row, then clearly there is something wrong, which is where the coaches did mention, like, that's where you probably need, uh, some expertise to be thrown in to say what you're doing right, or definitely what you're doing wrong for you to make your adjustments and then start getting the better results. Um, and I'd probably even go as far to say that if you did a thousand rejections, um, uh, or thousand approaches and got a thousand rejections, then you'd be just wasting your time as well uh, doing that much. I mean, you'd have to probably be quite have a lot of pride um, to be like, no, I don't want to work with a, a coach. I don't want to see a professional. I'd want to just do it on my own and go as far as that. So yeah, you'd only be really wasting your time if you went that far. Um, I said as well, like with most people, I mean, they would probably just give up after like 10 approaches and got 10 rejections in a row. Um, for guys who are very new to this, again, it's going to be so much more sensitive 
uh, or there's going to be a lot more sensitivity to it than someone who has been doing it for a while and uh, and they do feel a lot less phased by approaching and getting rejected. I can tell there's going to be like a, me saying the word rejection in this video is going to be a hell of a lot. Um, so, you know, just bear in mind that you've got to have a lot of strong willpower to have gone through like a thousand rejections. Um, the time scale of it. So I actually had, um, I, I was curious. So I'd, I'd brought up on a calculator. Um, I know whenever like I've been out with coaches or with clients, they on average do between 20 to 30 approaches a day. And I wanted to work out if someone were to do a thousand uh, approaches and get a thousand rejections, how long would it take to experience that? So from doing 20 to 30 a day, that would average between 30 to 50 days of just constant rejection. Now that's a very short space of time. And again, I think from that kind of intensity in that kind of window, you would just become desensitized to it quickly. You would just get to a point you're like, oh, another rejection, another one, God, another one. You know, and again, the resilience, the confidence or courage that you'd get from that, that's like going to a gym and, you know, being scared to lift like a really heavy weight and then going in and then struggling to do it and then going, walking away, going, oh, I can't do it, coming back. And then you lift it again and then you manage to lift it like an inch off the ground and then you put it down. You're like, oh, okay, right, I'll do it again. And then constantly going on until eventually maybe like within a month or so, you can actually like lift the weight and you can do some reps with it you know, you'd become desensitized to the pain and suffering that you've gone through, but you'd feel great at the end because you've managed to actually achieve or overcome the hurdle that you had a month or two before. So yeah, it, 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 that, that sort of intensity with rejections, you'd overcome the fear of it, I think, very, very quickly. Uh, next point I said was, uh, I, I put the repetitive repetitiveness of being rejected that much would bore you. Uh, the desensitization you'd feel would make you feel invincible. Okay. So I've had of mentioned it before, but just adding the invincible thing in there as well. Um, most clients I've worked with on average get into flow state between five to 15 approaches. After that, they claim to feel very Zen-like and liberated. So Perhaps maybe uh, you haven't experienced doing cold approaching before and I can also maybe assume that you haven't done it enough to get to that point where you are into flow state, you feel very grounded, you feel very present and then you actually stop thinking about uh, the things that would make you anxious. So you stop thinking about, oh, I'm going to be rejected or those limiting beliefs that play out in your head. Instead, you're just focusing on the conversation that you're having. And so you'll get better results because your attention is on the other person. You're actively listening more. And you're probably also so comfortable that you're going to be more, um, more playful uh, in your conversations. You're going to be more daring with the things that you talk about. And that usually happens after between about five to 15 approaches with people, even the beginners that I've worked with as well, and even for like myself. And when people have done this for a much longer period than time, um, they do get to a point where actually they can get into flow state even faster. So rejections then sort of become a thing of a past or they're not phased by them. They might then have one or two approaches done, uh, or cold approaches done, they might still get rejected, but you know what? It brings them into that flow state and then they feel very present again. And when they then start speaking to people, they actually get better results. Or the idea of just focusing on the other person does become a distraction from even remotely considering the possibility of being rejected. Uh, next point, uh, there's only two more points that I've, I've got written down here. Uh, without being aware of it, we are rejected every day in our lives. Um, and I've got examples of like, sometimes your card might not work or a food maybe that what that you wanted wasn't in stock. You get rejected with everything. And, you know, you're not uh, a puddle of mess. You're not 
crying all the time. You're not becoming agoraphobic and going like, oh, they didn't have my food in stock or like, oh, that item was sold out, right? That's it, my life is over. Life carries on, you get over it. And you have experienced rejections ever since you were probably really young to growing up. Like even probably your parents said, no, you can't have this. No, you can't do this. No, you can't go to that. You had, you'd probably had like a tantrum over it and then you got over it and it's like, all right, well, I'll, I'll find something else to do. And, and that was that. So people don't actually take rejection to heart as much as you probably also think that they do. Again, because we experience rejection all the time, but it's our, I think it's, it's how much we are, uh, how important it is to us that we don't experience rejection on a particular thing. So, you know, if a food wasn't in stock again, I'll use that example, then you're not going to be phased by it. But if let's say you wanted to win a championship cup in a football league and you didn't get it, then yeah, you're going to feel absolutely heartbroken because there's been more effort and commitment into trying to get a result and it didn't kind of play out as you would hope for uh, in that. So I'll try and think of maybe a better way or phrase to uh, explain that maybe in future videos, but I hope at least that you kind of get the gist with that. Um, and I think as well, just as a last point, that from this misunderstanding of desensitization, um, uh, it's probably the thing that does put men off from just genuinely taking action. Um, if you haven't experienced rejection before, then of course it's going to be a bit of a mystery to you and you just know like if you experience it, it's going to break you. Um, and that as well is in itself it is just a limiting belief that it's going to prevent you from wanting to do something because you're just scared or of what the unknown might be for your reaction to it. Um, of course, everyone handles rejection uh, in a very different way, but there is still that same process that everyone goes through. And of course, you get to a point that you are going to be desensitized to it. Um, I think a great example actually is when you start a new job. I mean, you go in being nervous, you don't know what you're going to do, you don't know what to expect or how things are going to go. And you just learn through trial and error until it just becomes autopilot and then suddenly it's not an issue to do your work especially if you've been doing it for like a year or so and it applies again to literally everything um, but when you've got guys who they want to be more confident socializing with people you have to face your fears and you have to do it and you have to go in with the expectation that there will be plenty of moments that things won't go well or they'll go wrong or you won't know how to handle it. You don't know what to expect. And that is OK. And at least by having like a support system in place, if not coaches, but just close friends as well who can help you through those situations, then it's actually a lot easier than you think to overcome them. And of course, when you do it so many times, you will become uh, desensitized to it. It will no longer phase you. So going back to your original statement and rejigging it into the question of, you know, would a thousand rejections uh, destroy your confidence? Absolutely not. Unfortunately, you do have to face your fears. You do have to expect that you will get rejections in life, but it is just a part of life. It's normal. It's okay. Even the most confident of people, they get rejected all the time. Um, and uh, if you don't believe that, trust me, I have seen even like the best looking guys get turned down by people. So, you know, there really is a lot of misconceptions of, I think, what like dating podcasts tend to put out um, uh, on the internet. But I can assure you, everyone experiences rejections. It is normal, but you learn and grow from it. And in fact, the more rejections you get, the faster you overcome it and the faster you do them, then the more confident you'll be, the less of a worry it will be. And you can then focus on improving your social skills and conversations and how you talk to people. And ultimately, that's just going to get you even better reactions as well. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. I absolutely loved to answer it. And it's not to knock the uh, the statement that you make. I thought it was a fantastic um, question uh, or statement for you to put there. 
because it's something that, that a lot of guys will also be thinking about if they haven't experienced rejection. But from people who have experienced it, they'll tell you once you've done it, it's not actually that bad. If anything, probably the first couple are probably the worst because you just don't know what to expect. And I think people tend to think about the worst case scenario here, which is usually that they're going to die if they go and talk to a stranger, which obviously is not the case. So um, thank you so much for the statement, especially if you do end up watching this. Um, I really thought it was great. And I loved being able to get uh, David and Christian's point of view on this. Uh, but if you are someone who is struggling with their confidence and you are maybe letting the idea of being reject rejected get the uh, the better of you, then do check out my website. I do offer something called desensitization training or my dating desensitization therapy, I should say, um, where I can help you, um, especially if you're a beginner to cold approaching, I can just help you to overcome that hurdle of just talking to strangers. Uh, I'm not too worried about the whole dating side of things of like helping you trying to get a phone number and conversation. I want you to just become more confident with going over and talking to people, which will be great if you're thinking about then to go to a dating coach. And if perhaps as well, you do have a lot of social anxiety and you do struggle to talk to people, maybe also have a look at my integral eye movement therapy where I can try and detach those unwanted emotions, maybe from past experiences that you've had that is preventing you from taking that leap forward and taking action and um, uh, responsibility for your life as well. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. If you can, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. Um, there'll be so much more content like this and absolutely love doing collaborations with people as well and getting their input. So thank you so much, David and Christian, for your input on this as well. So do check out their channels if you can, please. And I'd love to hear in your comments below what your thoughts are on rejection too. But other than that, I have been Dan, that dating anxiety guy. Thank you for watching. And of course, look forward to more videos coming from me in the near future.